Something hunts these mountains, shaped for myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Mountainous blood of the Indian. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone. He's free. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch. Mountain Man. Beneath the romance of the Mountain Man lies the harsh reality of life in the open. It's a life punctuated by the clash of a steel trap. Never pretty, but done right, swift and clean. And compared to other tangled ways of life in this complicated world, there remains considerable reason to recommend it to the enterprising young man. For winter provisions for the mountain man, there was nothing better than elk. Elk were once spread wide across the continent, found in more places than any other big animal. They lived in low country and high, but the mountain men knew that the place to find them was on the snowy ridges and peaks, deep in the dark canyons, and among the stands of looming black timber. Elk country has a perilous secret, though one that it shrouds in white. It's a secret it keeps until it knows you've come too far. Then, like a trap, it closes on you, holding you in its freezing jaws. And it's up to you to find a way to survive its grip. It's the grip of deadly cold that Laramie will face before this adventure is done. Laramie is not the first to confront the icy bite of weather and have to resort to drastic measures to come out alive. For the mountain men, the shadow of death from cold and snow fell remorselessly across their trails as they made their way through the bitterest seasons of the year. The packs on the horses of Zenas Leonard and his compatriots were laden with a fortune of prime pelts when a pitiless blizzard fell upon them. Days of relentless snowfall brought progress to a halt as deep drifts choked off the passes and buried the trails. The party was forced to roast their treasure of beaver hides for sustenance. Finally, with nothing left for their pack horses to carry, and with the prospect of death by starvation staring them in the face, there appeared only one heart-wrenching judgment. Laramie knows the treachery that can lie in this peaceful, beautiful elk country, but can he survive it? Having fed out early, the elk are now on the move back to the protection of the dark timber. It's late in the season for bugling, but not for other ways of calling. Elk, they gotta talk. They react to calling all year long. You know, you can't get aggressive like you do during the peak of the rut with them calling-wise, but you can still, just like cow calls or lost calf calls, 
you might find a big bull. He might come sneaking in, just curious, check things out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit here for a little bit and I'm just gonna lightly cow call for 20, 30 minutes. Even this late in the season, the cow calls bring a response that shatters the forest silence. worth of meat hangs on one shot. Above the mountains gather threatening snow clouds, and across the peaks, Laramie hunts the elk he needs for his winter provisions. In just a second, the hammer on the Hawken will fall. The hammer falls, and disaster too. In his mind, Laramie considers all that could have gone wrong. But it doesn't matter. All that matters is that nothing goes wrong the next time he has a shot. Or, like some before him, he may be left without winter meat or with a cruel choice. By the pitiful warmth of a meager fire, Zenas Leonard and his starving fellow trappers reached a harsh verdict to kill one of their gaunt horses. Slitting open its belly, they plunged into its steaming raw intestines and gorged. Eventually, as they made their arduous way out of the snowed-in country, they devoured all their stock. Only luck stayed them from even more heinous deeds. Laramie is some ways from starvation, but he has to keep his cool and not let frustration get the better of him. As much as I'd like to go chase these elk, I think they're gonna come feed back through here. If I'll just be patient, I'll get my shot. So I think I'm gonna hunker down by one of these stumps, get some brush in front of me, and just wait them out so you're till dark. It warmed up quite a bit today. It's been real cool in the teens. All day today it was 38, 40, 45. It tells me one thing, that there's a front coming in. More than likely, probably gonna have snow in the morning. As the hours of the day slink by, an unexpected meal comes into sight. Fox has been called unedible, but Laramie knows better. You add a little this, a little that, and a prodigious pinch of hunger. Well, I already got some potatoes and found some wild onions. And now I'm putting some fox meat in here. Got to add that protein somehow. Now tell me that doesn't look finger looking good. Nothing like some good old fox stew. You know, this is the first time I've ever eaten fox. I've eaten just about everything else in North America, but fox and coyote, two things I haven't eaten. And I'll never eat snake or horse. Not bad. I believe you could survive off it. I'm making my own bullets. I melted my own lead, casting it, the whole works. 
I'm self-sustaining. Yeah, it's not as much work to go buy it from the store. But you put yourself in that position, what if someday you can't get ammunition in the store? You know, you can't get any of the things to make ammunition. Well, you can get any of your lead stuff anywhere around. You can melt it down and you can create yourself some bullets. I can promise you I won't ever starve. I've got this deer hide and I've already salted it a couple times and stored it. That way it gets all the moisture out of the hide. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna finish flushing the whole thing. There's still little pieces of flesh here and there that I didn't get off the first time. And I'm gonna get all this salt off and finish flushing it real good. And then it will be ready to go in some water and soak, you know, to help seal them follicles of hair into that hide. And then uh, I'll either wind up making a vest or more than likely I'll make some stalkers out of it. But it's a very time consuming project. I might be able to wear this next year. But it'll be that same deal to where it's something that I have made and I know exactly where it came from and it makes me feel a lot better about what I wear when I know that my hands made it. spread with a new blanket of white is perfect for stalking. Last night it felt like snow. The front came in and warmed up for just a little bit. We got a nice little dusting. It'll help a lot for visibility, so hopefully this morning can be a good morning. Although early in the day, other hunters are out. Did you just hear that wolf in the distance? Did you? It's a beauty to be judged warily. This is home to the elk, and for Laramie, the site of an unforeseen catastrophe. For Laramie, the hunt goes on with hopes of no more misfires. There the elk are on the move into the timber. Just spotted some elk over here clear across the canyon. some cows in here while well, they're back in here this morning but we got this storm came through it's a full moon they moved real early before daylight this is about three hours old probably maybe four you know how you tell how fresh elk sign is yeah you taste it <laughs> and if it's chewy or slimy then you know it's fairly fresh Fallen white snow is like the page of a journal on which the elk are writing a record for Laramie to read. It's a lot 
easier to track animals. Got some fresh out tracks. Looks like two cows and a bull going down this way. Looks like they just crossed. Looks like a mountain lion's probably following these elk. It's doing the same thing we are. Well, I want to eat before that dang mountain lion does. Or else the mountain lion might be dinner. are out above the mountaintops. Laramie walks the ridges in pursuit of the elk, the wapiti, stateliest of all the deer in the words of the mountain men. And now it's a race between Laramie and a hunter who treads on four clawed paws. Well, there's a herd of elk clear across the canyon. It looks like I can, I can see for sure one bull in the herd. It's about 10 o'clock, probably 9.30. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to circle around this canyon. It'll be about two, three mile hike, but I circle around this canyon and come in above them. And that way I can crawl down there, kind of in the timber, so I should be able to get somewhat close to them. These are mountains filled with deception, because that bright sun may be snuffed out in a second. Air, once warm, begins to be filled with drifting flakes of white. Flakes go from drifting to falling, and as the freezing white jaws close, it's time to make shelter to survive the night. If you know the traditional ways, as Sasquatch does, there's plenty here to build not only what's required for survival, but for true comfort. It may seem contrary, but one of the choicest things for keeping heat on the inside is snow on the outside. You know, like they say, snow's one of the best insulators. And that's the truth. That wind kicks up tonight and it gets, you know, zero degrees or whatever. That snow is gonna keep me warm. Not my bedroll, not nothing like that. That snow, it'll keep all the wind off me. It'll be perfect. I'll be like sleeping in the Hilton Hotel. Or something. But no mint on the pillow. And this is what Laramie will have instead of a thermostat on the wall. When the fire is reluctant to start, you add magnesium shavings and stand back. Fire, shelter, survival, yes. But as important is the sense of self-reliance that's earned. In the bright morning sun, the place to hunt for Wapiti is on the south slopes, where they can soak up the heat after a frigid night. This is one shot Laramie is taking no chances on.
It's about 80 yards. I don't even know we're here. I'm gonna whistle and hopefully he'll stand up. stands, a fine five by five. And there is no question on this shot. He's down. <laughs> Tell you what, Ryan am tickled to death and he is gonna eat wonderful. He's gonna feed the Sasquatch family, that's for sure. Well, it's been one of those hunts. We've uh, been at it for quite a few days now. Then we got all the snow and the weather and we got the elk up and moving and we had to work a little bit for this guy, but it finally all panned out. What I got, I got back straps and elk back straps, not little white tail back straps. I got the good stuff. No horses were harmed in the making of this program, and Laramie's winter meat will see him farther along the trail of the mountain man. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. Black lines on parchment only hint at the adventure Laramie Sasquatch Miller seeks. To some, these are mountains, but for others, they are the bare backbone of a wild continent through which life spark flows. And Laramie Miller's quest has been to make his way here, traveling and hunting as the mountain men of another century did. His gear may not be foolproof, as when his hawk and rifle misfires. But that's part of the bargain he's made with the game and the land. Trading cold efficiency for challenge. Now, he moves on to his next adventure, Wapiti in the mountains of Northeast Washington, in what was once Oregon Territory. Just heard a bull moose grunting. Maybe cool to see him. <laughs> Laramie is on a hunt for help. But the first big game he finds is a young bull moose. It seems that Laramie and the bull moose have been vying for the attentions of the same cow with their calling. And Laramie may have won, perhaps to his regret. These cow moose can be dangerous. Without question, moose injure far more people every year than bears do. This lone cow, though, doesn't have a calf, so it's probably safe for Sasquatch to play charades with her, pretending he's a fine figure of a bull moose.
I was just playing with her. You know, the big bulls will get to waddling. Pass the rut a little bit, but you never know. She wasn't too spooked, so it's all fun. Laramie's picked his campsite beside fast flowing fresh water to make his life easier. And it's not just Laramie that values water. It's vital to the elk who will come here to drink and wallow, increasing Laramie's chances of finding them along here. These damp woods, though, make it difficult to find dry bark for tinder to build a fire. The best choices are spruce or cedar bark, which will dry quickly. Laramie knows enough to build a compact teepee fire, reminded by the old saying that the Indian makes a small fire and sits close to stay warm, while the white man makes a big fire and stays warm collecting wood. You know, I usually hunt in nothing but stuff that me or my grandpa have made. But in a lot of these states, because I'm carrying a black powder rifle, you have to wear orange during that season. Puts a hiccup in my game, but that's what the law says and that's what I'm gonna do. This stately and splendid deer, the lordliest of its kind. Those the words of Theodore Roosevelt about the elk. Okay, we're here in uh, Eastern Washington. Most people don't think about Eastern Washington when you, you think about elk hunting, but they've got a good population of Roosevelt's in the West and Eastern's got a good population of Rocky Mountain elk. So we're here to hunt Rocky Mountain elk today. It's nice and cold, it's probably 30. Hopefully these elk are up moving around. Should be fun, let's go hunting. These blowdowns, mossy giants scattered like matchsticks over the mountainside, a chore for even Sasquatch to hike across, but hardly noticed by the elk who clear them in one bound. It may not look it, but this is the easy part of Washington State. Washington is known to have thick, dense forests, but here in eastern Washington, you don't have the big undergrowth like you do in western Washington. But as you can see, you look up through there, it's still thicker than heck. So it's either gonna be a real close shot, or it's probably gonna be too far for the old Hawking. We're gonna have to get up close and personal. Sasquatch is brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Hunting elk with his hawking in eastern Washington, the first game Laramie Miller finds is moose. But he presses on in his pursuit of the stately wapiti. the heavy growth of timber, he does see deer. From last night, most of the time when you see it all clumped up like that, it's probably a bull. Cows will crap by their walking most of the time. So he was in here last night. Now we just gotta find him. On a distant ridge, much too far for his hawking, Laramie spots a herd of elk, telling him that they are indeed here. Carrying a blued steel muzzleloader requires the constant care of the hunter. Here I got just some regular old gun oil and I'm just gonna oil down all the metal on this so 
it'll help prevent it from rusting as much. And as much as I'm in the woods and as much as I'm out here, you can't help but get a few rust spots here and there, you know. Go ahead and load her up. I've got my bullet. You want to make sure it's seated real good because it's, it's a big uh-oh if you've got airspace in between your powder and your bullet. It's going to be a big hiccup. Now I'm ready to go kill me an elk. All I need is put a cap in there. I'm ready to go. It's a good thing Laramie oiled his gun as sleet slashes in. from the coast and the cold from the north meet up in these mountains. And for Laramie, any elk that may be out there are soon swallowed up in the heavy bank of fog. I like it tough, but this makes it really tough. Now, rain comes in to make matters worse. Starting to rain, we have lots of fog. I think I'd rather it be snowing than this crap. Two nice pools. In the steep terrain of eastern Washington's forests, Laramie Miller follows elk sign as the weather and visibility turn bad. Plus, the worst hunting conditions you can have. Conditions like this affect rifles, too. By choosing a black powder hawking, Laramie has upped the ante on this hunt. In its day, nothing matched a hawking for reliability. Yet, misfires were to be expected. Misfire. A flake of powder or a speck of rust is all it takes. I'm going to go ahead and pull this breech plug out. At the end of this is where your cap goes. There's a little pinhole goes down and your powder is seated right there at the back. So your cap sends the spark, lights your powder on fire, and then you got your bullet. See, and I usually like to take this and soak it in soap water, because as you can tell, there's a little bit of rust. You can see where the gunpowder is on the end. You know, you want to make sure that's all as clean as you can. Say your powder gets wet or your gun's not clean property, say that little hole right there gets clogged up. You pull the trigger and all it's gonna go is pop. It's gonna be like a cap gun. It goes pop. You think he's gonna stand there and look around, see what happened? A misfire might cost you an animal, but it could cost you your life. Laramie Miller has experienced the crucible of a misfire on old Ephraim the Grizzly. Only the bear's momentary confusion grants Laramie's suddenly clumsy fingers time to find one new percussion cap. Dang it. It's the thought of past misfires that haunts Laramie on this hunt for elk. I do bring a bore brush. Swab your barrel until you're not getting any more black is the biggest thing. You want to clean your gun every eight shots or so. You, your gun's going to be firing different because it always fires a little different when it's clean. I like to, after I clean it, fire it. That way, I've got a little bit of powder. The barrel's seasoned for me. So when I do have that big bull elk standing there and pull the trigger, that bullet flies true. Before the days of the Hawken, facing Mr. Grizzly was even more perilous. The only mountain dweller mightier than Sasquatch is the grizzly. Many found the tales of the bear's cunning, ferocity, and resilience to be outlandish until they met him. Lewis and Clark, with six of their expedition's best hunters, had the misfortune of surprising an enormous boar along a riverbank. 
From 40 yards, four hunters fired their rifle balls striking home. But the bear, foaming frothy blood from pierced lungs, charged on through the smoke of the flintlocks. Swinging long clawed paws like war hammers, the grizzly scattered the eight men, frantically trying to stuff powder and ball into their empty rifles. Three more shots found the bear, but seemingly without effect. Two of the hunters ran to the edge of a tall bluff above the river. The grizzly, in enraged pursuit, and leaped onto the shallow water 20 feet below. Without breaking stride, old Ephraim dived after them, determined to exact a price for his wounds. Shooting down from the bluff, another of the hunters crashed a ball. The eight fired into the bear into its skull, ending the terrifying pitched battle along the banks of the river. Laramie pushes on through the dense forest, hoping to see an elk at a distance where he can plant a stalk, but also knowing that he may need to be ready for an elk at point blank range as he's working through the brush. Sasquatch is brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Laramie Miller has found moose in this one-time Oregon territory, and the spoor of the elk he hopes to take with his hawking as he follows along the trail of the mountain men in the dense forests of eastern Washington. here in eastern Washington is so thick. I mean, you can't see 10, 20 yards. And when you can see a distance, it's five, six, 800 yards. It makes it really tough when you're trying to go after something with a smoke pole. Ideally, I want to be 100 yards or closer. Closer, preferably, but the only thing I can think is get up as high as we can and get to where it opens up a little bit at tree line or head down the mountain a little bit to where it opens up so that we can still hunt and actually have an opportunity because in this stuff, it's so loud and so thick that the animals, and they can hear and smell and see you way before you can hear, smell, see them walking through this thick stuff. So we've got to evaluate our game plan and change it a little bit. Laramie's plan leads him to the higher country where he can scan the horizon as he searches for elk and see the changing of the seasons unfurling below him. The yellow and red colors of fall spreading through the forest leaves like the embers of a coal fire. Inside his fire tonight, Laramie can feel the shadow of a possible misfire, adding to the growing tension of this already difficult hunt. But he sleeps, nonetheless, because he has to. Sasquatch's dreams are his own, but maybe the dream of this hunt is about to come true. Well. We got two nice bulls up here on the top of the ridge. They're about a thousand yards away, but we're gonna haul ass over there and see if we can't get up on them. What can you say about country like this except too tall to fly over and too thick to crawl under? Laramie draws as close as he can. But even so, it's still a considerable shot for the Hawkin 54. Laramie seats the percussion cap as carefully as if he were setting a diamond in a ring. Two hundred yards, and the bull elk didn't hump up and isn't dragging a leg. 
Now, Sasquatch must go and hunt for blood. I think I hit him. That was a far shot for the muzzleloader, but I think I hit him. Let's go check. Agonizing moments. If Laramie doesn't find blood, then maybe the elk isn't hit. But if he finds it, his day and his doubts have just begun. Got blood. These are some big, tough animals. I smacked him with the 54. It's a little over 200 yards, so it didn't go completely through, but I mean, he's bleeding, and he's already gone probably 100, 150 yards. through here and not get blood all over the place. I keep waiting to look up and see him, but this is ridiculous. He's probably gone 400 yards. You know, I love elk hunting more than anything, but this right here is what really kills me is I shot this bull. He was probably a little out of range. I've made that shot many times. I hit him, but after looking at it, I don't think I hit any vitals, but I drew blood. Once I draw blood, I'm done. That's the way it is. That was a dang nice bull. I'm gonna keep looking for him, and hopefully I can find him, but if I don't, it was a great hunt, but I'll have many sleepless nights thinking about it. Certainly the mountain men, whose path Sasquatch walks along, had sleepless nights of their own. Now the ice is here and winter's coming, and Laramie will have to leave the elk country behind as he follows his quest. Laramie will have one last supper and one last uneasy sleep here in elk country before he breaks camp. He has other marks on the map to reach before his season ends. This meal is not what he planned, not fresh liver and heart, but it is still part of the same bounty. Bet you didn't know Sasquatch was a gourmet chef. Tonight, Laramie will lie by his fire, and if the sky clears, he may see the star to point him in his next direction. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. There's always a hunter's moon in the sky above the wild lands where Laramie Miller treks. On his odyssey through the realm of his mountain men forebearers, Laramie has survived on powder smoke. The mightiest game of these territories has been his goal, testing a lifetime of skills and undaunted resolve. No more so than when face to face with the most powerful monarch of these mountains. Misfire. And now hell could be coming to breakfast. A small cap of copper and mercury is all that stands between Sasquatch eating or being eaten. <laughs> Alive to tell the tale, Sasquatch journeys on, 
breaking trails that lead him through the country of legends, pursuing mountain lion with horses and hounds to collect his prize with a feathered shaft launched from his longbow. Weather and white death stalk Laramie in the northern reaches of the Louisiana Purchase as he stalks the stately elk, known to the Shawnee as Wapiti, the white rumped one. Rifle, longbow, and trap, all part of Sasquatch's traditional toolkit. In the heavy timber of the one-time Oregon Territory, Laramie has to take a longer shot than he likes with his hawking. That was a far shot from the muzzleloader, but I think I hit him. But hours on the track find only a few drops of blood before all sign ends. Now it's a new game, a new camp, and new chores. That pot's got to get over 400, 450 degrees in order for that lead to melt. It's just a few steps. You heat up your lead, get it hot enough to where it's nice and smooth. You get your dipper, so you dip it in, put it in your mold, and then you pop your mold to smooth off the bottom. And you got you a bullet. The best bullets are made from lead type, so maybe the pen is mightier than the sword. Laramie Miller has come to Whitetail Country, following trails pointing northeast to the territory of the deer. The fall is progressing, and the gray skies and rains are continual. The downpour turning the bark of the trees black. Here too are showing the restlessness of the season. Saw this nice three and a half year old egg point. He was standing on the edge of this was on from up top up here. I hurried up, all down, been about a hundred and hundred and fifty yard shot from this point. I got here and he pulled the Houdini. Even with the rain, the forest floor is noisy, making Laramie have to measure every footfall. Why you have a switch and it's falling that way? Some dogs down around here should smell this. The bucks will be near the does. The does adding more ears and eyes to detect Sasquatch. the sound of the rattling and grunting, so Laramie can only wait and hope. Make me a warm pretzel. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. Laramie Sasquatch Miller has ventured into whitetail country. From the far west of the Oregon Territory, he has taken the trails heading northeast. And now in wind and rain, he hopes to call a buck into hawking range. I decided to sit along the edge of this opening right here and do a little grunting and rattling. About five minutes, a little eight point come in. He was curious as all heck. Boy, he sat there and he could see us sitting right on the edge of this. And he sat there and rubbed his pissed on his back legs and rubbed them together. He didn't know what was making that grunt noise, but he knew there was something there. That's what it's all about is getting close encounters like that, no matter, no matter if it's a 200 inch deer or a two inch deer. 
It's all exciting to me. For the old mountain men whose survival hung on venison, a deer like this would have fallen already. But for a man called Sasquatch, there's also the consideration of ethics, which tells him that this buck has more years ahead of it to reach its full potential and full maturity. Northside kept turning his head and under back on fast. This is trying to get us to move. For some mountain men, being unable to move was the greatest threat. Mountain man Raphael Carafel has found a frozen hell. Snow falls heavy on the trail, and Carafel's way is blocked by drifts. He pushes forward as far as his strength carries him, then burrows into the snow like an animal. Snow falls eight days, and Carafel sees no game. Now his feet are frozen. He beats on them with his rifle butt and forces himself to stagger ahead for hours but can only make two miles. Snowed in, he's stranded 41 days, shooting passing game, using flaming branches to fight off wolves that are trying to steal from him. The weather breaks, and Carafel reaches a settlement in 10 torturous days, losing half his blackened feet along the way. His only food, a drowned buffalo calf pulled from a river. Laramie Miller has not had to contend with snow here yet, but the wind and rain have been bad enough. The deer are plentiful, but Laramie still has to keep to his ethical standards. I've seen here about four hours. I've seen four deer. scene is not the problem, though, as the wind howls through the trees and threshes the leaf fall on the forest floor, putting the deer on edge. With darkness, the wind dies and camp beckons. mainly 50 caliber or bigger. A lot of them were ex-soldiers and their rifles were 50 caliber flintlocks. Well, when the Hawken came out, that was the big craze. That was the mad rush. Everybody wanted to get themselves a Hawken, but they only made 300 of them. Well, less than 300 true Hawkins back in the 1800s. The first one came out in 1823. But the reason the Hawken was such a crave is because your other rifles had anywhere from 40 to 46 inch barrels on them. Well, when they brought the Hawken out, it had 30, 32, 34 inch barrels on it. It's a lot easier to aim. I mean, you imagine aiming a four foot barrel. That's not counting the gun. You got a gun that's six foot long. You're not gonna be that accurate. Riding on a horse through all the brush up here in the mountains, they needed that shorter rifle. Plus it helped them with the distance. You know, they could shoot out to 300 yards in. Not real accurate, but at 300 yards, they could kill an elk. They could kill a buffalo with a hawk. Instead of having that old 50 caliber flintlock where you never knew if the thing was gonna go off. Care and maintenance, gun oil and elbow grease are constants in keeping your Hawken in firing order. It's the same care Laramie shows with his trap sets. You know, in a set like this, what you're mainly going for is bobcat, pine marten, raccoon, you know, any of your smaller predators that are after meat. What 
Laramie does not see is a big buck. Autumn in Whitetail Country, and as Laramie walks softly on the leaf falls, the wind and rain lashes through the timber. To add to his chances of finding food, he sets his traps in the trees. Follows tracks, but head high grass hides the deer. Time has now taken on the cadences of the wind and rain as Laramie continues to hunt for whitetail buck. But it soon becomes clear that he's not the only one in search of deer. Laramie is sharing these hunting grounds with other predators. continues to blow, it makes the hunting only harder. It swirls the scents, and just its noise turns the deer skittish and afraid to move, especially with wolves in the country. The way the wind's blowing today, I don't think them deer are gonna come out in this meadow. A lot of wolves around here, so the deer are pretty skittish. They're not gonna come out into this open because everything moves when they come out here. They're not gonna stay in the thick stuff, so makes our job a little tougher. I got my first gun when I was six years old. My dad told me he'd give me a nickel for every prairie dog tail I brought back. So I was awfully choosy on the shots I'd take because I didn't want that prairie dog to get down that hole. Being limited to one shot at a time, it's the best training a rifleman can have. A lesson that carries over to Laramie's choice of the Hawken that takes half a minute to reload. Well, we hunted in here the first day, and it was good. We saw a lot of deer. Decided to give it a little rest yesterday and went scouted out another place. The wind was blowing real hard, so we're gonna come back go set up here and sit here all day. And hopefully we get lucky. Sasquatch is getting itchy. With the wind and the rain, will this be a buck that Laramie is going to be willing to take? Make me a worm pretzel. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. In the north woods of the Whitetail, wind and rain and heavy cover have made the hunting hard enough for Laramie Sasquatch Miller. And now, the presence of other hunters is only making it harder as he waits for the right buck to appear. Ethics of Laramie's way, the Sasquatch way, mean only natural clothes and blinds, no tree stands or shooting houses. And you only have to look to see the proof of how the Sasquatch way works. wind, Laramie can only hope that the deer will move enough to come by where he waits. There's lots of deer in here, but 
all we saw today was a bunch of those fawns. One young, year and a half old buck. It's not what we're after. Laramie's other hope for fresh meat today is his traps, but even they don't pan out. No deer and empty traps, Laramie has only one solution for supper. Look what I found, a cute little friend. I'm gonna fry this baby up, make me a worm pretzel. You know, when I was a kid, my uncle, he took us out into the mountains, me and a few of my cousins, showed us what to eat, what not to eat, made us eat grubs, showed us how to start a fire with flint, showed us how to build our own shelters. He told us, he said, if anything ever does happen, you never know, it's always good to be prepared. So I learned at a very young age how to survive in the mountains off of nothing. It's a worm pretzel. Mmm, juicy. dawns at last on a quiet day in Whitetail country. With the wind down, Sasquatch decides to push as high and as far as he can. Now, all that should be left is a single shot. For Sasquatch, this is one of those choosy shots he chooses not to take. For him, it's enough to watch this buck swim across the lake as its surface sparkles in the last light. He'll let this buck go to reach the far shore and climb out so he can simply enjoy the beauty of its running. tail will make its way into some new part of the woods and while it does Laramie Sasquatch Miller will find his way back to his camp and there by firelight he'll unroll an old piece of parchment as he plans his path down the plains country and the greatest prize for any mountain man. Something hunts these mountains shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed. Sasquatch, Mountain Man.
For Laramie Sasquatch Miller, it's about the way. The way he journeys, the way he hunts, the way he lives. And the way has its rules, unwritten but ironclad, like when the game is too easy. That's when you don't shoot, but just enjoy watching it run. From the Whitetail Woods, Sasquatch now ventures onto the prairie in search of the grandest prize of the mountain man. It's hard to overstate the significance of the horse in the history of the American frontier. Among Native Americans, it turned nomads into emperors. For the mountain man, it opened new vistas and carried him to unseen horizons. Most important, the horse made it possible to hunt buffalo. Gentling a horse to the notion of riding up on a one-ton wild buffalo is no easy chore. This buffalo hide, I'm gonna use it in case it gets cold, but also just in case I can't get close enough to them buffalo or the weather turns bad and I can't ride my horse up next to him, I'm gonna use it to try to stalk in close on him. You know, this horse, he's never had any kind of wild animal draped over his back. It's gonna take some doing, but I'll get him used to it. When it comes to horses, you can't help but think of your betters, especially by firelight. You know, back in the day when the Indians were chasing the buffalo off the horses, they'd make themselves custom bows. They'd shorten them up to about three foot long so that they could shoot off the back of a horse. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to shoot off the back of a horse with a bow, but I have. And it's very interesting, especially if you've got a normal sized, you know, traditional longbow. You know, the Indians were amazing athletes. To be able to sit on the back of a horse with uh, no saddle, you're sitting there bareback, leaning side to side the way they did, you know, shooting off them, that's some horsemanship. For the U.S. troops who fought the Plains Indians in the 1800s, there was never any question of their foe's prowess. The finest light cavalry ever to ride horses, it was said, by those who engaged them in battle. None finer since the days of the Mongol hordes. The one thing that made the Plains Indians excel as horsemen was the American buffalo. Bison, bison. Here's what we got. We got two big bulls coming down this draw. I tied up the horse. I'm going to sneak up, put my old buffalo robe on, and see if I can't get within about 25 yards of them to stick them with the old longbow. In the tradition of Indian hunters, Sasquatch dons the disguise of the buffalo itself. There's nothing meek or mild or dull-witted about the buffalo, as Laramie learns when he finds himself being stalked from behind by a cow with bad intent. They're at about 50 yards right now. I need about 20 more yards to be effective with this long bow. To cover his stalk and for protection against a possible charge, Laramie moves into the trees. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. From the back of a horse, Laramie surveys the prairie realm of the buffalo. And with his longbow, he stalks beneath a natural disguise. It was 
worth a try. Got about 45 yards from him, but and they knew something was up. I said, no, no, thank you. Gotta adapt to all situations. That's some 60 square feet of robe Laramie has slung over his shoulder. Any of you have ever tried to carry a buffalo hide around? But uh, that's a workout in itself, even for Sasquatch. Oh. Well, I'm gonna go pick up the horse. This looks like a good place as any to camp. We'll try again in the morning. You know, there's a lot of people that always talk to me about staying out in the woods, whether it be they're lost or, you know, they're going out camping, they're going out hunting and they get stuck and they gotta spend the night out in the woods with essentially nothing. You wanna make sure that before dark, you get some firewood rounded up, you find a warm, dry place to stay. But you get wet and all heck's gonna break loose. Hypothermia is gonna set in and you'll start losing your mind and who knows, you might be running around naked and the bear might think you're cute or who knows what's gonna happen. So you wanna make sure you stay dry. If you ever get lost in the mountains, the one thing you gotta remember is don't ever try to find your way out at night because when it gets dark, you can get disoriented really easy, especially when you got big mountains on the side of you and it covers everything up, you can't see any stars, you can get lost very easy. It's the mind that saves. The mountain is merciless to the foolish. Knowing you can make a meal from toasted earthworms can keep you alive. Mmm, juicy. has alerted me to elk or deer or bears or pay attention to your horse because believe it or not you can teach him some things but he can teach you a lot of things too about woodsmanship hey, look at that you can tell there's been a lot of animals coming down this little rock face right here looks like buffalo tracks you can see the big deep gouges. I mean, it would take hundreds of thousands, if not millions of animals coming down this for a period of time to make impressions, even though this is sandstone, to make impressions like this. It's a big plateau up here, so they probably fed up here on top, and it's just a big cliff face. So there's only a couple places to get down. And the Cheyenne River runs down through this canyon. So I'm betting that they came up and they could see the water and they turned and one got brave and decided he was just gonna bail off this and they all followed and it turned into kind of a travel corridor. Buffalo trails or traces were the old west's first highways. Most ran north and south along ancient migration routes, but some went east and west, laying down the immigrant trails and even the routes of the railroads, earning the buffalo the title sagacious pathmaker. And the buffalo weren't just valuable surveyors. Like Laramie, illustrious frontier hunter Paul Richardson knows that the bison is a walking commissary supplying every need. Richardson's party has made a good stand, bringing down several mighty bulls. But now, in scorched country, water is a more desperate need than meat. Greenhorns would panic and gallop off after mirages, but for Richardson, water's right here. He slashes open the swollen paunch of a fresh-killed buffalo, the warm gut still twisting and crawling. Filling a tin cup with liquid stomach contents, he drains it, showing the satisfaction of a man quaffing vintage wine. The buffalo has much more to keep a man alive, though. Richardson cuts out the heart. He tears into its ventricles with his teeth. The melon-sized organ holds two quarts of blood, and Richardson drinks until he must take a breath, his face crimson. Sasquatch may find himself doing the same by the time this hunt is done. 
No matter where Laramie looks, he finds buffalo sign, even in seemingly impossible places. If you look up there, you can see there's a buffalo print in the side of this rock face. It's probably made by somebody no telling how many years ago. Three, four, five hundred probably, if not longer than that. And you can look, this is a big floodplain. That right there used to be ground level, but now all the water running down this canyon has washed all the dirt out and lowered everything. And so now that hoof is about 20 foot off the ground. There's no telling, it could have been one of them rock crawling buffalo, we don't know. Or maybe the notorious spider bison. Once the most numerous large mammal on Earth, by the end of the 1800s, less than 900 bison still ran on the prairies. Today, bison number some half million. We got these buffalo, they're about 50 yards right over this little knob. I'm gonna come walking up and just kind of sway back and forth like a buffalo. See if it works, see if I can get to 20, 30 yards from them. Ought to be fun. one of the most dangerous animals in North America, and the one that Laramie has challenged himself to hunt with longbow and arrow. Looking right at us. We'll just walk straight up that way. Just can't quite get close enough. They're not sure what I am. Many more people are injured by buffalo than bears. The only real hope of escaping an angry 2,000 pound buffalo charging at 30 miles an hour is to outrun it on a horse. You know, back in the day, mountain men, their life relied on a horse. And the one thing when they're looking for a horse, you know, they're wanting to find a horse that has the right attitude because when you get in tough situations, you might be you know, in the snow or having to go through a bog. If you don't have a horse that's got that get up and go and will to live, you're in trouble. Because a horse, just like people, they all got different attitudes. And if you got a horse that doesn't want to work and doesn't want to, you know, go after things in the mountains, you're up, you know what's creek. A horse is like a vehicle. You got to make sure that you maintain it. You know, you got to change oil on a car. If you run out of oil or run out of fuel, that car ain't gonna run. Well, it's the same way with the horse. If you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the mountains, make sure one of the most important things is you look at a horse, you look at his hooves. If he's got white hooves, you're gonna have a nightmare because you're constantly gonna be having to reshoe him and stuff like that. But if you get a horse that's got dark hooves, his hooves will last three times as long in the mountains because the white hoof is a lot softer. And you know, the most tender part of a horse's foot is his frogs. I check my horse every day and make sure there's no rocks stuck in the mud right next to his frog, because that'll lame a horse up quicker than anything. For Laramie, as for his mountain men forebears and Indian hunters, it's knowing that a horse and rider are one, a perfectly matched team, venturing where they could not or would not alone. From horseback, across the haunts of the mountain men, Laramie has hunted the iconic game of the West, from silver-tipped grizzly to giant moose. But on the open prairies, the bison may prove the greatest challenge and deadliest threat. You know, it's amazing to think what our ancestors, the Indians, the mountain men, what they did to survive. The thought of taking two pieces of rock, chipping an arrowhead, using antlers as needles, very interesting to me because 
I pride myself in being a modern day mountain man and knowing how to survive in any element, whether it be the desert, the mountains, the jungle, just because of what I've learned by being a mountain man, surviving in the mountains. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. Over the plains, wrote one observer, the Indian hunter dashed amongst the buffalo on his wild horse, loosing his deadly shafts. And this is the shadow Laramie Miller follows. and some cows right here. You know, these buffalo, they've got thick, thick skulls. Back in the day, whenever a buffalo would charge, the old people would try to shoot him in the head, and it doesn't do nothing to him. Their little skull is so thick, you can't penetrate it. And if you don't hit them good, they're tough critters. It'll take them a long time to die, so you want to try to hit them right above the heart, right in the lungs. Well, usually that does the trick, but you still got to respect that animal. It's a 2,000 pound beast. And respect the buffalo the true hunters did, knowing it would give them everything from meat and leather to sinew for bows, grease for a myriad of uses, dried dung for fires, and even dark hooves for glue. Couldn't quite get close enough to them with the rope. They got real itchy, so I'm gonna try a different scenario. Hopefully they don't charge, because there's quite a few buffalo to try to evade. I'm a mountain man ninja, but I don't think I can do it. In his buckskin shirt, Laramie is coyote colored and able to approach the herd on all fours. Indian hunters would drape the hide of a white wolf over themselves, calling it a wolf mask and crawl into bow range. But now, even a possible coyote draws the attention of a nervous cow with a young calf, increasing the risk for Laramie. Each yard that takes him closer also narrows any chance for escape. That cow really doesn't like me being here. She thinks I'm a threat to her calves. Cows are probably twice as dangerous as a bull because there's a couple calves in there. So uh, kind of a tricky situation. With his chosen longbow, though, there's no choice for Laramie but to get close. smokes. That was a little hairy. He turned and looked at me. I saw the whites of his eyes. You stand up on two feet and boy, they're out of there. But I crawled and I just kind of acted like a coyote, just kind of messing around, crawling around. Man, I crawled 25 yards. It was a good shot. I hit him in the lungs, but these suckers have some big lungs, boy. He'll lay down here in a minute. You can tell he's kind of getting woozy a little bit. That hoisted tail on that one buffalo is a sure sign of agitation from the smell of blood on the buffalo Laramie hit. Holy cow. I'll tell you what, them are some tough critters right there. Oh. Look at that thing. Can you imagine back in the day, them Indians, and they'd probably kill a dozen or more buffalo in one hunt. I feel sorry for them. That's a lot of work. You got 1,800 pounds right here, and they used every single piece. Laramie Miller knows that the buffalo is just a shadow of what it once was. 
when 60 million thundered across the prairies. But it is a shadow worth following, a dream worth repeating, a tradition worth keeping. As Laramie continues his quest of the mountain men. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. Reliving the rough-hewn adventures of mountain men past, Laramie Sasquatch Miller has trekked the jagged backbone of the continent. From the Northwest Territory to Oregon country to the Buffalo Plains and prairies of the Louisiana Purchase. On the way, he's incorporated the skills and wisdom of his fur hunting forebears and his native ancestors to sustain a vital vision of the old days in the modern world. a single feathered shaft, he's brought down the biggest, most revered mammal on the continent. Now he reins his horse southward to the land that has seen six flags and the banner of the mountain men. The southern reach of the Sasquatch saga, the Republic of Texas. Night's dress and armor. And armor for Sasquatch is buckskin with thrums and outside in fur. And for Sasquatch, it matters that he traps and prepares his own hides, using a sharp blade and infinite patience to ready a plume for trade. Well, now that I got the hide off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flush it all out, get all the flesh and membrane off that skin. The critical step is treating the hide to pull out as much fats and oils that can rot the skin. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna finish flushing the whole thing. There's still little pieces of flesh here and there that I didn't get off the first time. With all the flesh gone, Sasquatch soaks the skin to make it pliable. While it's drying, I will flex that hide so that it's constantly stretching from the time it's wet until it dries. It's very, very time consuming. I might be able to wear this next year. When next year comes, Laramie will know where to go for expertise. You know, I could get a needle and thread and do this myself, but I hope Papa John's got all the machinery and he's the master at this. He taught me everything I know. You son of a gun. That's about the truth. <laughs> Small antlers cut up to make buttons. I make my own. Cut them up. Looks good, huh? Like a new vest now. She's ready for a bunch more work. Tough as his grandpa, Sasquatch's clothes take a beating, and it's no secret where or why. Normal everyday wear and tear day wear and tear for a Sasquatch. <laughs> I learned how to do all this stuff from my grandpa. You know, nowadays I look at it and it's a lost art. If I ever come to know half of what he's forgotten, I'll be a very educated man. The trail 
of Sasquatch's education leads him south to the farthest chapter in the story of the mountain men, the Caliche Rock country of Texas. This was once forbidden Comanche land, but other tribes offered other threats. 30 sleeps north, legendary mountain man John Coulter stands naked on a riverbank, a captive of 800 Blackfeet who condemned him to death for the crime of trespass. Already, his trapping partner has been torn to pieces by a musket ball, arrow, tomahawk, and knife after killing one attacking brave with a futile shot. Now, the Blackfeet find amusement by striking Coulter in the face with his partner's innards as they palaver over a final verdict. Their decision is at last a perverse one. Coulter shall run for his life. Now here in Texas, Laramie Miller beds down in preparation for his hunt to come for a unique species of wild sheep. years ago, Texas was the center of the fur trade for the Spanish explorers. It was the first place any European saw the buffalo, which the Spaniards called cows. By the time of the mountain men in the 1830s, Texas was a rich source of beaver, otter, badger, bear, deer, buffalo, and wild cattle, plus jaguar. The Spaniards found wild sheep here too, but said the country was too rough to hunt. But that's not how Sasquatch sees it. That's pretty cool. We got about at 25 yards. Sasquatch Miller has made a jornada, a journey south to the beautiful but harsh country of the Texicans, where he means to hunt the wild sheep called the Owdad with his hawking rifle. There's big sheep trails, tons of sheep sign. A lot of it's older because in the summer they'll get under here. When it's real hot out, these bluffs will be shady, so they'll get under and bed underneath all these bluffs. Stay out of the wind and sun and rain and everything else. Pretty neat. Tough as the Texas terrain is to walk on, it's nothing compared to the running John Coulter had to do if he was going to escape death. For the Blackfeet, the fate of captive, naked John Coulter is sealed. But first, they'll partake in some sport. Let him run. We will chase him like a wolf chases a rabbit. Coulter runs till blood spouts from his nose. The swiftest of the warriors overtakes him and thrusts his lance. Coulter wheels, grasps the shaft, and breaks off the point, killing the brave with one stab. Renewed strength carries him the five miles to the river, where he dives in unseen and hides in a beaver lodge till dark. That night, he escapes with his life over the snowy summits of the mountains. There, these otter have phenomenal eyesight. They're eight, nine hundred yards away and picked us out quick, and off they went. It's the same kind of terrain as hunting these desert bighorns. Real rocky bluffs, kind of rolling hills, really open. It makes it tough for spot and stop. But that's what I'm all about. I love to spot and stop. 
I don't like hunting out of stands or blinds or anything like that. I'm going to go make it a level playing field. I'm going to go spot and stalk, and I'm going to try to get up close and personal with these animals on the ground. That's the Sasquatch way. How dead aren't the only game in Texas, and they are certainly far from the most destructive. As you can tell right here, these hogs have been coming under the fence, and if you look, I mean, they just tear stuff up. We're gonna set up some snares along this fence and hopefully try to catch us some hogs. Whether it's a coyote, bobcat, hogs, anything, you wanna to try to funnel them into a certain area. Just like any of the trapping you're doing, you're trying to focus an animal to go in that spot. Whether it be a snare, you're lining it with logs or a beaver, putting sticks in the ground so that it funnels it right to where your trap is. And that's all that's acting as is a funnel. Sasquatch will return to check his hog snare, but now he wants to press on in his hunt for our dad. sheep right down here in the bottom. There's one really good ram with them. They're in a pretty tough spot to get to, so I think we're gonna back out of here. We're gonna let them continue to feed up that canyon and we might be able to circle around and get above them. You know, one of the things I absolutely love about Texas is it's a great place to hone your skills. If you want to learn how to spot stock and want to try to, you know, sneak up on animals and stuff like that, well, you've got tons of eyes looking at you. And it's fairly open, so it's a great place to learn how to stock because you'll get opportunities all day long. Sticking to the high ground, Laramie hopes to spot the sheep before they spot him, giving him a chance to practice his stalking skills. As if out of nowhere, there's a gift sheep right in front of Laramie, only one shot away. Says Quoch Miller, it's been a long ride on the mountain man trail to the Texas Republic. And here in this rocky, brutal land, he's just spotted a ram. In the wet and miserable weather, Laramie will try for a shot. gun sound is as loud as a brass cannon to Laramie's frustrated hearing. As Sasquatch fumbles for a new percussion cap with hands that must feel like they're inside beaver mitts, Mr. Sheep avails himself of the opportunity to pull up stakes. see there's a little bit of a circus pulled the trigger on the muzzleloader and it went pop it's been raining wet humid nasty damp that ram just walked over the edge once the ram makes the rim it takes only a minute or two to get far across the canyon and out of hawking range 
with its binocular eyes still fixed on Laramie. Sasquatch is disappointed, but he knows this is just part of the way it is in the mountain man world, and he also knows he's about to be beat by darkness. set a hog snare against the possibility of taking nothing with his rifle. And now he checks it on his way in. You cut a hog. You look, you know, a lot of times there's a few different ways to set a snare on fences like this. You can either clip it to the bottom of the fence or you can tie it to a bunch of logs or whatever you want to tie it to. And this hog got over here before he died, but it did the trick. Progress, one hog down, a million to go. The bounty of Texas wildlife means that Sasquatch won't have to worry about going hungry, even if his muzzle loader fizzles out again. Sasquatch is ready to begin his stalk for wild sheep once more. You know, one of the biggest problems people make when they're trying to stock up on animals or just steal hunt an area is side to side movement. You see an animal over there, one of the easiest ways for them to pick you out is the lateral movement. They can see really good side to side, but their depth perception is a little off. So if you walk straight at them and keep something in between you, the two of you. They could be looking straight at you, but as long as you keep something between you and them, a lot of times you can walk right up on an animal. Go try it. Tell me how well it works. Well, we've got a bunch of sheep way down in the bottom of this canyon. I'm trying to figure out the best way to get to them. About the only way we can is we're going to have to circle all the way around this canyon and come up from the backside and try to sneak down above them. It'll be a long hike. But there's a bunch of sheep down there. It's going to be tough to get close enough to the old smoke pole. You drop like a sack of rocks. In the Caliche Rock country of Texas, Laramie Sasquatch Miller faces the frustration of every mountain man when his rifle fails to fire in wet conditions. And he must watch his sheep get away. just like an elk or, you know, whitetail, whatever, and my dad will get down in there and they'll piss. 
all over that area and then they'll roll in. Just another way of marking their territory and, you know, putting their sin out. the sheep spotted. A big outdad ram can carry 30-inch horns and top 300 pounds on the hoof and scale a sheer rock face like a spider climbing a sticky web. Now, if only Sasquatch has kept his powder dry so his hawking will make some smoke. Sack of rocks. That was a little bit of a hang fire, but it worked. <laughs> you know, the tricky thing about shooting some of these old guns, flint locks even worse, is you get a hang fire, you better, your follow through better be dang good. No, sir, job's not done till the fire gets to the powder. It's one thing to remember if you're ever shooting muzzleloader or flint lock, hold on to your target for a little while. So we circled around and started coming down, got real close, and laid the hammer down. He dropped like a rock. Well, we definitely earned this odd ad. We had to walk seven, eight miles this morning, and this country is unforgiving. I hike the mountains all the time, and this is some of the toughest terrain to navigate just because your footing is horrible. We put our work in. It's all paid off. Yes, paid off in a rare trophy. Here on the farthest edge of the Mountain Man territory, Laramie Miller's found the curls of magnificent horns. The journey of Sasquatch is far from over. Thousands of miles on the trail now carry him back to the country he knows best, the country of the elk. Something hunts these mountains, shaped from myth. Formed by the spirit of the mountain man, he lives by the way he hunts. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian, he survives by hawking and longbow. He's alone, he's free, he's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. For Laramie Sasquatch Miller, this has been an epic voyage of discovery in a single season. has been a way to live off the land. But when it comes to tradition, especially with the terror king of the North American wilderness, disaster can hang on a small copper cap. Now the question is, which is faster, a charging grizzly or a bulky muzzle loader? A bear standing up looking, could have turned bad real quick. <laughs> Dead grizzly does indeed concentrate the mind. But Laramie's quest for the dangerous game of the mountain men didn't end there. 2000 Claw have not been the only threat, as Sasquatch faced white death on his way to making his winter meat. Laramie 
his pack the trapper's basket. And as he trekked across the historic names on the old maps, he's lived by a code of ethics that has added a special complexity and meaning to the course of his journey. Tatanka is the name from Laramie's own native heritage for the most revered animal in all the West. And for Laramie, there's only one true way to hunt this icon. For Laramie, the arc of his quest now carries him back to the bedrock of his life, the great shining mountains and the lone hunt for the one animal that most made him what he is the American elk, or wapiti. Laramie Miller has the sound of the elk's bugle and the sight of its hoof prints to carry him into the mountains. The subtle and sophisticated art of calling elk includes the cow whistle. It's a very low success rate. We get so much rain that you can't go sit on one water hole and expect to kill you know, a decent bull or an elk because they travel so much. They travel 10, 12 miles in one night. If you can kill an elk with a bow in public land Colorado, you've done something. For the mountain men who preceded Laramie, these lands were all public, open, and free. But they were not all created equal. And even the mountain men had to hunt hard to discover the finest areas. The mountain big game is not limited to elk. This young ram has more peaks to climb. Laramie's calling sounds irresistible to at least one bull. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. The marrow of Laramie Miller's bones is mountains like these. Calling and hunting elk are in his blood, even when victory goes to the Wapiti. One bull may have bolted, but Laramie's calling draws the attention of another. But it's deer and not elk that put in an appearance. For the mountain men, a dog could be as vital as a horse, 
sometimes in extreme ways. All hope of finding elk vanishes, and cruel famishment beckons mountain men William Sublet and Black Harris. As they snowshoe 500 miles through blinding blizzards, their loyal wolf dog carries a 50-pound pack of jerky. But the Indian dog's pack is torn, and all the jerky is lost. In seeming amends, the dog catches a scrawny hare, but the men are ultimately reduced to eating raw raven. The failing dog can barely keep up on the marches, and now beside a feeble campfire, three gaunt figures unable to travel farther face starvation. Without elk, two of them will have to look to the third for desperately needed nourishment. A cow will make different calls, and each sound and each pitch relates to how she's feeling at that time. You know, you got call to her calf, you've got cow calls to other cows, you've got cow estrus calls. Your estrus calls are when the cows are in heat, they're ready to be bred, and that's what really gets them bulls fired up. And for the most part, they're longer and drawn out, have a lot more energy in them. You know, real kind of long, drawn out, higher pitched. If you got a bull that's getting antsy, and you want to calm him down, a good way to calm him down is some cow-calf calls, you know, to make him more willing to come in for the most part. That would be... You know, just real law, soft and low-key. And the better you know the different sounds the elk make, the more success you're going to have. I was real fortunate. I was raised up in a hunting family. I've been hunting elk my entire life. My uncle owned an outfitting business, distributed VHSs back in the 70s and 80s. My grandpa's been hunting his whole life. My dad guided for my uncle. I've been lucky to learn from some of the best. By the time I was a young man, I was already educated in elk better than anybody that could have been out there 20 years. For Laramie, the mountain man way is simply part of an old family tradition. Responds. Right there, that's what I live for. In the mountain wilderness, Laramie Sasquatch Miller is taking the ultimate test. Hunting elk with bow and arrow on public land is as extreme and challenging as it gets. He just bugled again up here. See if he won't calm down and bugle again and maybe go after him again. In camp, Laramie has wild Barbary sheep meat to fix with potatoes and wild onions to give him strength to hunt elk. The Republic of Texas is the far end of the Mountain Man Trail and where Laramie ventured to hunt out at. That's pretty cool. We got him out at 25 yards. Just a bunch of hues and kids, though. Nothing more than dark. Still cool. The Caliche Rock Trails were once trod by the boots of Spanish conquistadors, then mountain men bent on finding everything from badger to jaguar. For Laramie, the quest was this large wild ram dressed in fringes of long hair. pounds on the hoof and able to scale rock faces sheer as skyscraper windows. Now, the journey spirals back to the heart of the game for Laramie Miller. 
Luckily for all concerned, Laramie has sufficient sheep meat for the moment. Black Harris tells starving William Sublet that their wolf dog must die. Shuddering in the frozen night, a freezing Sublet weakly concurs. Sensing its fate, the dog flashes its fierce yellow eyes and bares its fangs as Harris approaches. But the dog also is too weak to stand, and its growl becomes a pitiful howl as the first blow of the tomahawk descends. The hatchet head then flies off the handle. A wretched sublet must get up to assist in the assassination, stabbing the dog with his knife. The dog is thrown on the embers of the fire, but it's not dead and kicks itself off. At last, the terrible deed is done and the dog roasted, the mountain men staving off death with their cruel victuals. See? We got a bull that just headed into the timber up here. I think I'm gonna drop back down and go down the valley so that I can get the wind right and come up blowing. This is for mountain goats, not Sasquatches. This looks like a good little transition area. They're transitioning from their feeding to their bedding area. I'm gonna let out a bugle and see if I can't get a response. I like to stop, you know, in places I think the elk are gonna be hanging out at that time of day and either bugle or cow call and see if I can't get a reaction so I'm not bumping elk and walking into elk. Got a bull bugling up the canyon at us. The wind's still a little shifty, so I'm hesitant to move in on it. It's as if time, going back across the centuries to the old mountain men, has drawn to a halt. Sasquatch is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. The wild and free summits of the Rocky Mountains. For Laramie Sasquatch Miller, it's the heart and soul of the way he takes on life. Elk moving right there. See him? The final ascent begins. <coughs> it's an elk Laramie could take, but it's a bull with more useful years ahead of it the sacred tenet of the Native American, that the land, the sky, the water and the game can't be ours to attach deeds to. At best, we may only be stewards and servants. You see the elk have been traveling through here like crazy. There's game trails everywhere, a lot of fresh tracks and sign, a lot of fresh rubs. There's a big meadow up at the end, up above Timberline. I think we're gonna come up here and sit and wait for them to come back and feed. Easiest way to tell the difference between a cow and a bull track. A cow's shoulders will be more narrow than her hips. She 
gives birth to calves, so it's kind of natural. The bull's gonna be carrying horns, his shoulder, because his shoulder's gonna be wider than his hips. The cow's gonna be the opposite. Her shoulder's gonna be narrower than her hips. And with age, the older the cow, the more definite that you can tell in their track. You can tell right there, that's a real young cow. Their hips are just a little bit wider than her shoulders are. Not much, but just a little. Look right here, you can tell there's an elk bed bedded down sometime fairly recently. So uh, we gotta go real slow, we're in their bedding area. I usually don't like to disturb their bedding area, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. The backbone of the continent, the long trail that winds across land and time, a lifetime in a season. In the taste of the fall wind, Laramie senses the final goal of his journey. receives an answer. There's more than one bull calling back. the bugle and knock an arrow. let fly in the woods, and there is one man and one elk to hear it. Well, we got this bull to bugle up the canyon first thing this morning. We worked our way up onto this bench and couldn't get him to bugle. And finally, we get up on this bench and got him to respond to us again. And he was calling, but he wasn't real fired up. And so I started chuckling at him, and the whole canyon erupted. <laughs> Right there, that's what I look for. To live for a life in the wild, a life of freedom, to follow the tracks of the mountain men, that is the Sasquatch way. Mm -hmm.